What's up, dudes? That's really bad. What? You, you just you know you're you're all you're all pissing vinegar today. What happened to you? I, I have eaten like... one bowl of ramen all day. So not so long ago, I was talking to a couple of my buddies, and they were instructing me that bees eat honey, which I didn't know at the time. You may think that's stupid, but I just thought they made it. I never questioned why. So then we realized it would be fun for them to educate me on different things that I may or may not know. And today is that video. Buckle up, boys and girls. Educating. Jason with the J. First thing we're going to talk about is plants. And we wanted to talk about crown shyness. Do you know what crown <laughs> what? shyness is? Crown shyness. <laughs> crown shyness. I'm really fired up for this because like, I feel like you guys really are really going to bring in some heavy hitters. I've never heard of crown shyness. So my guess is like, it has to be like a plant that grows and its petals make it look like a crown either because of the light reflecting off it or because they're like yellow and sparkly would, would be my guess. It's when a canopy um, is like the trees are growing and the canopy is separated by certain trees but it's a mystery to people that are actually looking at it. Fully stocked trees do not touch each other, but they're still forming a canopy with channel-like gaps. So trees that don't touch yeah. and create a canopy is what we're dealing with? Yeah. That's not <laughs> yeah, if you, if you like look up in a forest, if you like look up in a forest, you can see gaps between all the trees. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's called crown shyness. Yeah, I, I don't know why like they that. gave it that name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, hold on. So is this spelled S-H-Y-N-E-S-S? -S? Oh, you thought it was like shininess. I thought it was like shyness, like like some weird plant word I've never heard of, like S-C-H-I-N-O-U-S or something. No, it's like being shy. No. Oh, 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 <laughs> I would never have known what that was either, but that... I kind of like my spelling better. Can we I'll, I'll call I'll call science and let okay, them yeah. know. <laughs> I'll call the science <laughs> department of the world and be like, yo, crown shyness. Hey, uh, you're spelling shyness incorrectly. Yeah, it's got to be, be fancier. Ch shyness. So I'll start with the, with the one that that made me think of. So something pretty awesome. And I, I didn't get real technical with this. I don't have the technical names for everything. This is all just off the dome. This is just random <laughs> okay. shit that's in my brain. So but you like verified that these things are true? Yeah, I, I, I double checked. I double okay. checked. <laughs> no, he didn't. I know he didn't. I, do he totally I double didn't. checked some of them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So this, I may or may not actually be learning true things. I have, I have true. approximate knowledge about many things. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so <laughs> if you, if you go out like, you know, you know, before rain, you know how it like smells, smells like rain. Yeah. Um, number one, that's actually uh, based on the ozone layer. That's, that's the smell of ozone. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's not related to the fact I'm saying right now, but that's just a different fact that came to my mind. But that, is that true? Um, is that, that is really true. true. That, that is, is true. true. Yeah. That it's because ozone O3, right? Isn't it like yeah. extra yeah. oxygen? Yeah. If you go outside and you look at some plants, all their leaves before a rainstorm are turned over. Like how, how far before the storm? I'm sure it depends on the plant. I don't know. Like how often do you put on a raincoat before a rainstorm? I don't wear raincoats. <laughs> I just live in California. Rain. California rains. It, dude, it rains like 10 days a year. We have a drought. We're always in a so you drought. you don't have a raincoat? You don't have a raincoat? No, I don't have a raincoat. Why would I have a oh, raincoat? Oh, 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 I don't need a raincoat. I'm Jason. First of all, yellow is not a flattering color for me. Second not all, all raincoats are yellow. Rain. Mine's gray. Well, and raincoats also, they're like sweatsuits. Like, I don't want to be wearing a sweatsuit when it's raining. Like, I don't want to wear a sweatsuit ever. You've been buying the wrong raincoats. I, I haven't been buying raincoats. Like, I don't want one. There's your problem. Get I don't live raincoat. where it rains. I, I intentionally don't live where it rains because I hate raincoats. Buy a raincoat. I'm not going to buy it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can the do a The leaves are actually reacting to the sudden increase in humidity. Uh, and that's, that's why do you, that's do you, you really? just have so a pop it's the, it's the abrupt change in humidity that, uh, lets the wind flip them over. 
it's it's all uh, deciduous trees like maples and poplars. <laughs> deciduous. What does deciduous mean? Uh, deciduous is like a leafy tree. Coniferous is the needly tree. Oh, yeah. And then there's palm oh, trees, like, you know, yeah, the, the yeah, palm yeah, trees. Yeah. Deciferous. De- oh, deciferous. Like deciferous. Yeah. <laughs> Write that down. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now I'm warmed up. I feel like I'm going to get the next one. That one's yours, Randy. Yeah. But <laughs> this one is, uh, I don't think this one's too widely, uh, like, explained. So uh, so this one is, uh, is related uh, to trees as well. So... Uh, the root systems under trees connects with the uh, mycelium under the surface of the ground, and it allows trees to communicate with each other, which is really cool. They can uh, they can pass nutrients and information to other trees in the forest. Hold on. So, <laughs> so trees roots connect underground. Yeah, and can pass <laughs> nutrients. Yeah, nobody is telling me how to pronounce this. I'm like they can, can they, like. Like they can exchange like carbon, like water, like what they? Yeah, yeah, they they like pass water and such. It's Avatar. <laughs> That's what happens. Everything's in, the- in Avatar. Yeah, it's it's like av- it's it's Avatar. We live in it's Avatar. A- it's is Avatar. what I'm trying to say here. We live in Avatar. Um, so I, I'm saying it's Avatar. I'm saying this word wrong, but it's called uh, a mycorrhiza network or a <laughs> mycorrhizal <laughs> network uh now yeah I, I i i'm saying that wrong i can guarantee it because it's a weird word spelled <laughs> m-y-c-o-r-r-h-i-z-a I, I mean you know you do the math here that sounded um me. yeah so so i don't know uh you know how that's actually pronounced but so like how i'm kind of curious like how far apart trees can be and still connect to each other like, do they seek each other? Like, how do they, like, they sure know they have to be them. like relatively close, but like, how do they know? Like, how do they even, I mean, they just grow into each other. Like they do it because they're trying to hit other trees. Or no, like that's they the thing. Know- it's not, it's not just the roots touching. So it's not just them growing together. It's also um, mycelium fungus under the surface are connecting the roots and passing carbon between trees. So these things connect the root. So the roots yeah. grow and these little masks are connecting them so they can exchange nutrients. Well, well, these masks are just like like mushrooms. Like all fungus and mushrooms are like doing this under the surface. <laughs> so they're like, yo, guess what? Maple tree. I'm I sure there's like a tax. Place. Like it's it's probably like a like a tariff, you know, like uh <laughs> like when we trade with other countries, like you yeah, hey, like- take a five percent. Yeah, like, yeah, they, yeah, they keep some of the carbon for themselves because they can't, like, that would be badass if they actually <laughs> had some sort of, like, currency underground. Yeah. Mushroom currency. Mush- <laughs> Mush- Mush currency. Mushroom currency. Could you imagine, like, trees have, like, a barter system going on where they're, like, yeah, I, I want to know more about that all the way. Like, I wonder, like, if one needs carbon and one needs water, like, what the exchange rate is. Can they exchange water? Like that's that's the that's my next question. The the diagrams I was finding uh, all said carbon. I have heard water too, but like all everything I found was hold on. I actually found a different diagram. I kind of yeah, like yeah, I, water too, water too. Because then I'm thinking like, could you imagine if you're a tree that's close to like any sort of waterway, and you would just be like sucking up water and getting carbon from like you know what I mean like. Because I'm sure like the soil changes depending on where you are. So like you're I, in a, sent more, a diagram. Yeah, it just feels like like one of them would be. Could somebody pull that up? Like one of them would be in a much more like nutrient dense environment than the other ones. So like that's really cool. I like Is that, that. Socialism. It sounds like it. Yeah, it's like they're just like they're like all right. Look, we're all in this together. We're all in the forest. We're not going anywhere for hundreds of years. Like. Let's pull it together. Let's talk. I don't, I'm it's kind of lonely here being a tree. Like, I just want to hang out with my friends. I'll give you some carbon. You give me some water. You scratch my back. I'll scratch yours figuratively because we don't have, well, we do have arms. Are they called arms? Branches. They're branches. I guess they could scratch each other if they wanted to, but they probably. I'm sure they scratch each other. You think so? (laughs) Like he, yeah, you know, like one tree is close to another tree, and he's like, "Yo, my bark, there's a lot of ants. Like, I kind of could use some help." And another yeah. one, the wind blows, and he's like, 
you got you got more you got more bite than my bark so we're just gonna spell oh, here. <laughs> you think like trees raz each other they're like there's like a little bitch tree and like everyone just picks on them all the time and they like shade him in so he can't get sunlight but then in the back end they feed him carbon so he's all good but they make him suffer <laughs> like the little like saplings that was a really fun fact i like that one also related to mushrooms and fungi and uh mycelium and such so mushrooms and fungus are not plants <laughs> they're actually closer related to animals than plants wait <laughs> <laughs> mushrooms, mushrooms and fungus are not they are, are not, not plants plants they're not plants they're in a weird center category of their own so what like what makes a plant a plant so the like the main difference is the way that they eat food so a mushroom or a fungus they decompose food and they get their nutrients that way while a plant gets its energy from the sun through uh photosynthesis oh wow so fungus eat instead of they like digest instead of uh like processing shit inside themselves using light that's why fungus lives underground yeah i need to know more about photosynthesis we need to add that to the list of things we're going to teach me next time because like i don't i mean you know chlorophyll (laughs) yeah like i yeah chlorophyll (laughs) <laughs> you know chlorophyll and light yeah. and water and shit and carbon dioxide and we make yeah. oxygen. based on how little i know about it that's as good of an explanation as, as i could expect <laughs> I, how, how much more could you really need to know you know like do, do you want the do you want the chemical compounds i, I got you i got you because <laughs> it basically combines those things and turns them into oxygen right like isn't that how it works yeah like the no, byproduct of whatever well, yeah they take the uh, they take the carbon out of the oxygen that's their food and then they release the oxygen it's a byproduct yeah it's it works like co2 goes into the plant it releases um o2 Just that's oxygen. fantastic like what a great deal all right here <laughs> we go six carbon dioxide molecules and six water molecules are converted by light energy captured by chlorophyll into a sugar molecule and six oxygen molecules. Wow. So it takes, that's interesting. That's, that's why interesting. Um, when you have plants, it is converting like a healthier air. Yeah. Less carbon dioxide in your house. Mm-hmm. So it combines carbon dioxide and water. Yeah. And Using the it- energy from sunlight to uh convert it into sugar and oxygen okay so energy from sunlight water from the sky carbon dioxide from all around it it uses that energy does its thing creates sugar and oxygen pumps that back out and uses the carbon like what a fantastic deal like i mean i totally forgot that from symbiosis whatever like dude i mean that's like and that's what we need. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's what, that's why it's like a, an ecosystem, man. You know, everything's interacting like that. We produce carbon dioxide and we need oxygen. So we live symbiotically with plants and then we cut down rainforests and stuff. Well, yeah. but, <laughs> there's a dark side to it. But, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they produce air for um, us. We breathe it in, cut them down and create right, people for like, us. Oh, and there's one more part to my, to my fungus talk. I got one okay. more part of my fungus okay. talk. I swear, <laughs> then I'm done talking about fungus. No, I'll stop I talking about fun. Fungus is like one of the coolest things uh, in the animal kingdom. So, you know, I, I had to write a lot of stuff about fungus. Dude, fungus is badass. So uh, I mentioned uh, mycelium a few times in a bunch of my fungus talk. So that's the part under the surface that's like integrated into the soil. Um, and what you see sprouting out that you think of when you think of a mushroom is a like sprout of the mycelium. So that's, that's the mushroom. It's like a, a, like a fruited plant essentially, uh, just to make a comparison, but, um, like cutting off a mushroom, isn't killing a mushroom. It's just taking a small part away from a fungal network. That's huge underground. Moving on. (laughs) We're going to talk about farm animals. (laughs) Did you know if you draw a line in front of a chicken while it's laying down in front of its beak, that it will become hypnotized? It what? 
If, <laughs> if you draw, hold on. If you draw a line in front of a chicken while it's lying down, it becomes hypnotized. A chicken can be hypnotized or put in a trance with its head down near the ground by drawing a line along the ground with a stick or a finger starting at the beak and extending straight outward in front of the chicken. Oh, you have to draw a line perpendicular to the chicken. No, the, the chicken is laying down and you draw a line like this and it will become hypnotized. And what happens? What like, how do you do that with a depth perception? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, so like what, how, I mean, how do they snap out of it? Like what, what happens? They just lay there. <laughs> <laughs> Until someone like crushes the line and he's like, whoa, I'm back. Like, oh, the life makes sense now. <laughs> I watched a couple of videos on it. I'm like, what the? And they just like. <laughs> <laughs> they just. <laughs> so are they the only animals that that happens to? Like there have to be more, right? Okay. I'm not doing a research paper on this. I'm giving you. Okay. <laughs> okay. I bet you it has something to do with uh their depth perception i think a lot a lot of prey animals don't have good depth perception because their eyes are uh on the sides of their head so they don't like line up together as well so it's probably just like uh they're like whoa what the fuck's going on here <laughs> yeah i kind of want to like lie down in the sand and have somebody like do this yeah, and see if, and it, see like, if it puts you in a up. trance it's pretty crazy and they also looked it up and said is that cruel to the chicken if you do something like that's a good question Oh yeah. Wow. Well, it's kind of like the fainting goats thing, like the goats that yeah. faint or they become rigid, like when you like spook them, but apparently it doesn't, I don't know, actually, I, I don't know that this is true or not, but I've heard that it doesn't really all that dramatically impact them, but that could be wrong. Cause I would think that anything that like makes you like super, like that can't be good for the animal. Right. Like, I mean, you're not talking to the goat. You don't know how the goat feels about it. Maybe the goats like it. Like maybe they're just, yeah. maybe that's it. Like it's like an orgasmic experience for the goat and they're just like so overcome with joy that they like, that's the version I'm going to tell myself anyway. I hope I see a fainting goat soon. Those things are cool. What do you know about how do cows cool down on a hot day? I don't know any, that's actually a really good question. I, I have, cause like they could use their tail to like swap flies and such, but I don't, know that they have any sort of mechanisms for doing that one little known fact about cows is that they use their horns as a sort of air cooling system almost like a car radiator cows circulate blood into the blood vessels in the center of their horns where it cools down since it's far away from the cow's warmth core <laughs> what is it, wait cows if, if cows have horns it cools them down <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna say that they move out of the sun but oh, i guess that uh yeah probably not right huh so okay that's interesting so does that mean that bulls are even better at keeping is that why bulls have bigger horns it's why you can have cattle in texas where they're not dying and they can cool themselves down oh that's why they have like the long horns that's yep. gotta be it right yep dude so then interesting i wonder if like moose do the same thing with their antlers okay but they, i would hope they don't cool themselves down it's, well no you know, like the opposite like they're cold. like it's like a little furnace up top so they send their blood to the little heating units and they just like well there are also monkeys that don't have noses so they look like voldemort because voldemort it's nose. so cold that um, it would be too hard to warm that nose up that's why people lose the tops of their nose I feel like this is less about educating me. I almost feel like I'm being pranked. And I, I also feel like I should be determining which of these things are true because there's no way that all of these things, because that one, like the cow one doesn't make any sense. Like they it pump does, blood into their horns that cools them down. Like that's- Yeah, wild. horns aren't like fleshy. So they don't have like body heat up there. So it's uh easier to cool like a hard surface than like, you know, your fleshy meat that has blood running through it right but it's, it's like how cool. just look it up it, it's true i'm not like i'm not doubting it i'm just saying like this is why we're ones, educating <laughs> for the ones that don't have like the big horns like it just it's amazing that it could cool enough blood to really make a difference i just think it's interesting like kind of like how, probably a more uh, temperate climate 
Well, yeah, because like some people, like with showers, like some people actually have like the hot water tanks that store the hot water, but then other people have those things like on the pipes themselves. So when the water comes through, it heats it really quickly and then it shoots out the other side or like goes through like a hot coil or some shit. So like, I kind of wonder which of the two it's more like, like if the blood just kind of like chills out in there, cools down and goes back, or it's just such a cool area that it like goes in. And by the time it's out, it's already cool. I mean, I'm sure it's not like drastically colder, but it probably, you know, regulates body temperature better. Yeah, I'll buy that. True. (laughs) True. If you see a sheep on its back, help it out. (laughs) (laughs) Belly up sheep. Because it's a, it's a, if I see a sheep on its back, help, help it out. Yeah. So they can't do <laughs> what? Like, why is that? Like, so a belly up sheep, it means it's either too fat to get up and it's going to suffocate or like it's going to die there unless you help it to move it. So like they can't get up on their own. That's interesting. Is And is that only like, I wonder if that could happen to, it probably happens to like older ones too. It's like, how would they even get stuck on their back though? I, like, I feel like more like on their side would be like a predicament, but on their back, like you almost have to try to get on your back if you have four legs. Because they're too heavy. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah too much roll. Like flatter, you know, like if they fall over and they immediately go to their back, like that's a weird deal. <laughs> Think about a turtle. <laughs> yeah, and imagine trying to flip over a fat sheep. Like I feel like that would be a tough thing, although they have handles everywhere, so you can really like... Yeah, and then you got to, like, navigate the hooves. I'm sure they're kicking, man. I, you know, I don't think they'd be okay with you just walking up and pushing one over. Right, because, like, they don't – it's not like they're like, oh, thank you, Mr. Human, for helping me. They're probably like, what's going on? First like, of this all, this dude's going to eat me. Fat. Yeah, I'm fat. I'm laying on my back. I'm very vulnerable. And now this dude's coming over who usually, like, shears me or milk dude yeah goat milk is a thing oh sheep sheep's, sheep's milk, is a sheep's thing, milk is a thing yeah. i don't think it's as common in the u.s but shearing is actually like a okay process for sheep it doesn't hurt them at all i feel i feel like that would probably feel pretty good actually because like getting it's a lot hair, of weight yeah yeah and they're probably super hot too so like i feel yeah. like they could be sheared <laughs> now it's like cows cows want to be milked as well um really Yes. I wonder what that feels like. Ask a pregnant woman how they feel when they haven't like gotten the milk out of uh, out of themselves for a while. Right. But I wonder, like, but yeah, but like, does it feel like what is the sensation of like releasing the milk? Like that's I think it's just a decompression. Oh, okay, that makes sense. But I'll I'll go like call a pregnant woman if you want. Yeah, it's in the name of science. Like it's it's a good. Time. Yeah, yeah. I need. I can't Google this. I'd- well, yeah. So I I won't I won't say who it was, but we were on a a trip once, and someone, like they they weren't milking regularly enough, and like they had they brought like the breast pump or whatever with them on this yeah. trip, but they didn't do it for a couple of days, and like the pressure had built up, so she had to take like a hot shower to kind of calm herself down. Like it mm-hmm. was a it was a whole situation. Which, like, I didn't even know that that was even ever, like, yeah. a thing. But I guess it makes sense because your body – because, like, you know, at least humans, like – and I may, I don't know, maybe cows are the same because I don't know if they just produce milk all the time or if it has to be, like, after they've had a baby, which that's, you know, how – uh, I mean, do, but... yeah, generally the way it works is, like, I'm trying to find, a, like, an okay way to say this. Yeah, the more you, like, lactate, the more it's, like, continuously produced. If you stop and, like, you, you know, essentially, like – when your baby stops drinking it, um, then it will like, you won't produce it anymore. So with cows, they continuously milk them. And like I said, it is something that they voluntarily do them. They walk into the machines to be milked. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's like a, a milky machine. It's weird. But, um, so, uh, like since they're consistently being milked, they will, continue to produce it yeah i'll buy that well th- i mean because i watched this show once that it was talking about not like a black market but basically that that people were by like adults were buying breast milk because they were i mean i guess you know it don't it like is, that it, yeah, well, <laughs> it's very like nutrient dense so like some people yeah. were drinking like protein shakes and shit using yeah. that milk and like the, the some of these ladies like were lactating for years and just like pumping it into a fridge yeah. and just like they literally had an entire refrigerator dedicated to human breast milk i bet you they make hella dough though 
Oh, for sure. Because like the people that are buying that, like it's not like you could just go to the supermarket and be like, yo, breast milk section. Yeah. Uh, follow up to that. I'm not Googling that. <laughs> street price for breast milk i do actually wonder how much it goes for i bet it's like because like regular milk is what like how much is it a gallon like five dollars i got i don't never buy milk i don't know but, i buy oat milk i don't know okay yeah if it's five dollars a gallon i bet you breast milk for the same gallon would be like 50 bucks because like to fill yeah, a whole gallon can't be jug, cheap. yeah it actually probably is like a hundred bucks Maybe yeah. even more because it takes a lot to fill that. I would think it takes a gallon of it. Actually, <laughs> wait, hold on. How how much goes in a gallon jug, Jason? Science. <laughs> <laughs> how much did you say goes in a gallon jug? I, I didn't I didn't catch that. I'm pretty good at the maths. Okay. I know. All right, we're gonna move on to the next subject. Anomalies. This is outrageous, by the way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> do you know what glowing waves in california are caused by what glowing waves so uh every I'm gonna... two to three years in california you have glowing waves i would guess that it's moonlight reflecting off of a jellyfish migration that doesn't happen that often or some sort of like organisms that float around in the water yeah it's a bioluminescent plankton so you were kind of right with the organism that floats in the water. Why is it only every couple of years? Like, it's just like a migration pattern thing or? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it's just like a rare occurrence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can go surfing in the night. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like cool. it's enough to like light up the situation or it's just like. Uh, it's enough cool. to light up the wave so you can see everything. I like and... that. When does it happen that? It's like the whole coast of California? Uh, different parts. It depends, but it's actually like a pinkish plankton that you might see the next time that you're like driving down the highway on the coast. <laughs> I was going to say, I live pretty inland. So if I was seeing that, I, I would have to get pretty worried, but yeah, that's pretty cool. And it's like a pink glow. It's not because when you said glow, like I always think of like, no, it's, it's a blue glow. glow yeah, it glows in blue. The daytime, it's pink. Oh, okay. yeah. If you see like, like a blob of like pink shit in the water like that's that's plankton <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, there, there's a bob's burgers episode about it <laughs> that was a fun one true okay so we're gonna switch over uh just to overall animals <laughs> okay if an owl flies in the forest and no one's around to hear it does it make a sound <laughs> that was corny <laughs> i'm gonna go with uh oh this is like is this like the uh what's it called schrodinger's cat is that the one where it's like in the box and it's like dead and alive at the same time yeah no. but completely unrelated <laughs> completely yeah owls, yeah it was okay owls fly in silence and then you said vultures wings make loud noises yeah yeah um how you... comes and picks up its prey but it flies in silence. And they've done tests on this where they have mics around it. They fly in silence. Yeah, birds of prey, uh, their wings don't make, when it comes to like hawks, they make more noise than owls. I know owls are quieter, but birds of prey fly quieter than, uh, what do they call them? Predators of opportunity, which are like vultures because uh, they don't have to sneak up on a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So like, even when they're like fully flapping, like they don't make as much noise. Yeah. yeah. They, they don't make any noise. They fly in silence. Like there's studies where they actually. They, no, no, they, they fly like their, their feathers don't make noise. Yeah. Oh, wow. I thought you yeah. just meant like when they're, so you're saying when they're, there's no, 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 there's no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I, I did. I would, that feels false false <laughs> uh that's actually true <laughs> even though we weren't doing a game show here but <laughs> um all right. right all right here we go we've arrived at the tarantula focused portion i do yeah how are your spiders they're pretty good nice they're they're basically rather, what would you rather somebody ask you how your spiders are or how your tarantulas are uh, tarantulas actually this one isn't in my plan but tarantulas aren't spiders they're in the arachnid family but they're not spiders what yeah it's it's a whole thing 
uh, it's it's a scientific classification. They don't have the same uh, like prefix. False. False. <laughs> no, it is, no, that is true. Um, as it, as it goes, I don't remember the exact scientific name for what differentiates them from spiders, but you know, I keep a lot of stupid stuff up in here. All right. So just just to be clear, what we've learned today: mushrooms are not plants. False. Tarantulas are not spiders. Super false. That one's super false. The first one may not be false. The last one is super false. Super false. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Tarantulas come in two major categories um, and that we categorize them as a new world or old world tarantulas. And this is in the like tarantula hobby because uh, I, I have pet spiders. I know plenty about, uh, you Actually, know, you not don't spiders. Have, yeah, whatever. Spiders. <laughs> I, call them, I call them spiders anyway. You know, they got eight legs and they got fangs. I don't give a shit. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. if a spider is not exactly with eight to legs us fangs, as the layman, who cares? <laughs> they're spiders. Yeah, um, they're so they're categorized as a new world and old world tarantulas. And a new world is in the Western hemisphere. So like North America, South America. Um, and old world is Asia, Africa, all that. Um, so old world tarantulas are, they have much more potent venom than new world tarantulas. New world tarantulas, it's usually like, uh, you could kind of equate it to like a bee sting but with bigger, bigger fangs, still well, hurts, still hurts. Old world tarantulas uh, in their more potent side, like the really potent ones, if you have heart problems, they can stop your heart. Uh, on the less potent side, they make you feel like uh, the bite area is on fire for about a week. A lot of people get hospitalized from really bad old worlds. Um, usually that's an accident because uh, nobody really wants that to happen. Well, I would think not are all, but not all tarantulas are poisonous, right? They're all venomous. They're all venomous. Yes. All tarantulas are venomous. Um, there's very few uh, non-venomous spider species. Uh, the camel spider is uh, the only one I know of that's non-venomous. Uh, and that's another one that's like not an actual spider because it's like a different arachnid, but uh, the camel spider, instead of using venom, it has uh, two sets of jaws that just rip stuff apart. You find those in like the Middle East. Dude, I hate to break it to you, Randy, but spiders, they're weird deals, man. Like, they're cool as hell. Eight legs, hella fangs. This one's got two jaws. Like You're just one, talking about cool stuff to me right now. Just when I thought, <laughs> just when I thought these dudes couldn't get any scarier, now they've got two Yo. jaws. Yo, you wait. I got another scary thing for you. So um, uh, on a tarantula's abdomen, you know, the little like hairs that they have on that. So they can kick those off. They can what? kick them. I'm no. serious. I'm serious. <laughs> they can kick these hairs at you with their back legs. And it's irritating to your skin and eyes. It makes you like itch. It gives you it gives you a rash. When I when I started uh, owning tarantulas, I, I got I got hit with the hairs. Yeah, it's really itchy. So they just like okay, yeah, they, they, <laughs> they kick them off. So, 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 so I'm gonna have to put a video in here of them kicking off their hairs because it's hilarious looking. So tarantulas, <laughs> tarantulas kick off their hairs at you. Yes. To fuck you up. Yes. To try to get you to leave them alone. Because like, imagine you're like an animal with its mouth open, trying to like bite a tarantula, and you get a like a mouthful of hair that burns. <laughs> you're probably gonna go somewhere else. Dude. What are we what a bad what kind of restaurant thing. is like, this place yeah, honest, yeah. Man, like like that kind of like i still Check, don't like tarantulas, but that that's something like i can i can kind of get behind that like that's pretty badass i like that i like that a lot it's cool like they spiders. also 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 on the tarantula abdomen they have uh spinnerets which look like two little fingers and that's what uh crafts the web um so they they got like two little fingers on their butt that uh like lay web down it's pretty cool uh <laughs> called spinnerets um the I abdomen also down. i have this on here uh the abdomen of a tarantula is like real fragile um it's like it's like water balloon consistency so like if a tarantula falls it'll just like like pop um the abdomen contains its uh its brain and a lot of its organs 
uh, it's heart, it's stomach, all that's in the abdomen. Um, so it's like, kind of weird because you think like the head of the tarantula to be like, oh yeah, that's like the brain part, but it's not. So, I mean, what a like poor job of evolution there, right? Like yeah. all of its most precious things are in the weakest part. Of in the weakest body. part, yeah. What's that? It also about? shoots hair off of it. So. <laughs> 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 they added a missile launcher <laughs> Dude, that's that's a fun fact i i want to say that one's false but that's true true it's true <laughs> thank you for <laughs> clearing that up the shitty thing is no one's gonna believe that these are my actual reactions but since you guys know me like this is just like how i receive information and yeah. all of this information is just so <laughs> I don't like, I don't know why it's so wild because I don't really know that much about spiders, but like, I just feel like this is all so wild. It's cool stuff. That's why I like tarantulas. They got neat stuff about them. Yeah. I didn't know about this, <laughs> the kicking in the hair. Like that's a, yeah. Like you, I've never once seen that. Cause I feel like, like planet earth and shit. Like, why do I not know about this? Like, cause that's, cause like spiders, like people don't like spiders and it's like, why like, if I knew that, maybe I'd give them another chance. Because right now, they're just all fangs and bullshit. But, <laughs> like, now that I know they oh, kick hair. Well, are you I aware mean... that there are blue tarantulas? <laughs> false. There no, are blue false. tarantulas. <laughs> Dude, there's orange tarantulas. There's blue tarantulas. There's yellow and blue tarantulas. All in one spider. Yellow and blue. <laughs> <laughs> one spider. So It's like the horse. Package the deal. It's got it all. It's like the uh, the horse of a different color from the Wizard of Oz. They just, you know, it does what it does. Except it doesn't change. It's just always those colors. No. And that's based on like the, the the like local like flora, I guess. Like it's got to disguise itself differently. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're they're mostly from like the rainforest. Huh. And also, I mean, you've seen like poison dart frogs. The the ones that are blue are the like very they have very potent venom so they don't really care and do they i guess they regrow the hairs that they kick off is that a thing yeah yeah so uh they molt they get bald spots after they kick the hair off and then next time they molt uh all that hair comes back so they shed their uh their exoskeleton yeah they, they grow the hair back after a molt but they don't grow the hair back until they molt oh are you guys aware that there's a spider that scientific name is named after David Bowie. What? <laughs> I'm serious. It's called the uh, Heteropoda David Bowie. <laughs> and it is bright orange. <laughs> As it fucking should be. As it should be. <laughs> so that, okay, it was, it was hold named on. that after he died. Hold on. So, so there, well, can you get, run that name back one more time? Uh, heteropoda David Bowie. Heteropoda David Bowie is an orange spider. Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a David Bowie spider. Like, how there's did, how, how am I just finding out about this? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I swear that was my last spider fact. I'll stop the spider spider. Yeah, that is spider fun back. because, like, I don't know anything about spiders. Like, I, I just know that I didn't like them. And now that I know a little bit more about them, like, uh, they're kind of not as bad as I thought they were. I think we have time for one more. So, uh, Randy, do you want to <laughs> talk about your foreheaded? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm is that what we're going to end it on? We're going to end yeah. it on that? <laughs> so, uh, are you aware of the animal, the echidna? The echidna? Yeah, it's called an echidna. <laughs> No. Are you familiar with the Sonic the Hedgehog series? Yeah. So Knuckles the Hedgehog, Knuckles the Echidna. So I always, I always grew up saying Knuckles the Hedgehog, but he's an Echidna. He's not a Hedgehog. Knuckles um, is not a Hedgehog. Yeah, he is an Echidna. So an Echidna, oh. it kind of looks like uh, if I could if I could put it into perspective without showing you a picture, it's like a porcupine ant eater mole. <laughs> <laughs> They're weird looking. They're weird looking. So the echidna, you know, we all wish we could be as lucky as the echidna. It has a four-headed penis. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, wait. So is it we like, could all be so lucky? Hold on. So is it like uh like there's like a splitter and it could like pee out of four holes at the same time or do they have different functions like <laughs> and and do the females 
Please tell I'm me. I'm just going to tell you for your own safety. Just don't look it up. <laughs> Please tell me that there is a female echidna with four vaginas. This seems like a natural follow. follow I know. I know. Oh. The echidna females only have two vaginas. Oh. <laughs> you looked it up. I did. I did. I did. Um, yeah. Yeah. So why the mismatch? Well, it seems the male will alternate using the two heads to inseminate the female before switching to the other two heads. To it again. That's some endurance there, right there. Dude, honestly, bro, we we could all be so lucky. So wait. So he. So that's interesting. Can he like? Well, I guess he can't. Can can he can? Uh, see, now I'm curious. How does that work? So they have one shaft. So, so they have, uh, yes, it is one shaft. They have <laughs> one urethra that's then splits into two urethras and then splits into four urethras. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just to back this up, I wasn't going to use this one. I put it on the list as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but this one, okay. This I want to really talk about fun. the mantis shrimp. <laughs> this is going... <laughs> You can't expect me to take the news for the first time of a four-headed penis and not wonder how it all works. Like this is this is something. This is something that most the furthest can't. I will Google for you is how many vaginas does the kid and a female have. That is where I will end my Google search. <laughs> you can That's Google right. search past that if you'd like. It's an interesting but I will not to draw the line. It really that is. is exactly where I draw the line. Well, I'll tell you what, I did not know what to expect with this video, but I am pretty friggin' thrilled that we, <laughs> we did this. And I, I'm excited for future ones because like, I still think most of these things were false probably. And you guys are just punking me. Is that gonna happen like a year from now? You're gonna be like, dude, remember when you thought these things had four penises? Spiders are, flicking, spiders are flicking hair. There are trees that don't touch. There's fungus among us in all the soil or some of the soil. We're not sure. <laughs> Moral of the story here, flip the sheep. Be a good guy. Flip the sheep. Flip the sheep. Flip the sheep. You heard it here. The, the international symbol for flip the sheep. <laughs> so what did we learn today? Well, apparently there's an orange David Bowie spider, which is completely phenomenal. Spiders, or I guess tarantulas, maybe spiders, can also do this, but they can, with their back legs, kick off their hairs. And apparently that irritates their predators or people. I don't know. But like, <laughs> I don't know that they're venomous or how that works or what the deal is, but they can kick that off and then the hairs regrow when they molt somehow. I'm not really sure. There are something crown canopies that grow and the trees don't touch. Fungi grow below and above ground, which I knew that much, but I did not know that they connected trees. They connected the roots of trees and they could transfer carbon in between trees and that system and maybe other nutrients, which is completely wild and absolutely amazing when you really think about it. Talked at length about photosynthesis. I don't know if any of it was true or not. I mean, it stands to reason that those things would be true. I'm not 100% sure. We learned that Knuckles is not a hedgehog, and I forget what the word was for him, but apparently he's got he's got four, he's a four-headed beast, which is absolutely crazy. So yeah, it was a super fun episode to make. Always good to learn new things. As far as the reactions go, I mean, I know that most of you don't know me that are watching this, or maybe at this point in the channel's development, you are, but I mean, these are just my pure reactions to random things that I'm learning and I am easily excitable, which is why everything's like, oh my God, what? But I had a blast doing it. I think we're gonna make this into a series. We're gonna see how this video turns out because I have no idea what it's gonna feel like, look like, seem like, but I think this one's pretty cool because it allows me to learn things. It allows us to speculate about things. And it's just kind of fun to, to chit chat through this stuff. So anyway, I hope you like this video. And if you would be so kind, please like the video. Please ring the notification bell so you know when the videos are popping up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new here, welcome. 
But all of those things, creators say them all the time, and they are really important. They feed the algorithm, they get this stuff to more people. So not even just my videos, if there are other people's videos that you do really enjoy, be sure to smash the like button because it does go a long way. So anyway, from my heart to yours, thank you so much. Always appreciate you guys watching these videos. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any ideas for future videos, for future series of videos, for things you want me to talk about, or things you want to educate me on, let me know in the comment section. Until next time, friends, this is me signing off.